ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 105 of the MTV podcast, presented and hosted by Worldwide Cyclery. I'm Jared. I'm Jeff. And I'm Liam. In this episode, we are going to discuss a couple killer bikes a friend of ours designed, IMBA's e-bike education, and listener questions ranging from three-foot-long butt hairs, tips to flying with your bike, bike resale value, socks material, knee pads, and much more. And I apologize that I sound slightly nasally. It's that time of year. DJ Green Goblin, play a sound effect. This is a certified hood classic. Trapaholics mixtapes. Right here. And, and, and we're talking and, about and Crestline. we're talking about Crestline. So Crestline, we've talked about on the podcast before. It's a couple good friends of ours that are starting a bike brand, and we talked about it a lot when you rode their downhill bike, which they made. Um, yep. Yeah, Buddy Troyden and Mark, those guys are unbelievably good, talented mountain bikers, and they're starting a bike brand. The I think the original ethos of the brand was to make a sort of longer travel premium heavyweight e-bike. When, when are people going to classify yeah. the weights of these? I don't, I don't know about classification. Know. Well, we're going to actually talk about that next. Oh, yeah. Not quite the same. When when I first set out, they wanted – both Troyden and Mark were pretty early on the e-bike game. Um, Troyden especially hated pedaling. Everyone knows who rode with him. He was annoying to ride with because he just complained <laughs> all the climbs. So he got an e-bike and, and was super awesome. fast on the downhill. Yeah. Um, so he was an early adopter to like aggressive e-bikes. And there just really wasn't anything on the market that like stoked him out. So he was like, I'm just going to design my own. Yeah. Um, in terms of travel, geometry, battery size, motor, all, all around. Uh, yeah, yeah. As a whole package. And then as they're coming out with it and, and working on it, uh, Santa Cruz came out with a bullet, which fit almost everything, but had a Shimano motor, which everyone knows has its quirks. So, um, yeah. And then also they, they did release the downhill bike first, but they were working on the e-bike longer, but, um, getting motors, getting tolerances worked out with all that stuff, supply chain, cause they're selling complete bikes, not just frames like they are on the downhill bike. Um, ended up being about six months or so later. So yeah, they just announced it. Earlier this month uh, with the article on Pink Bike. It's official. It's That's official. That's a really good looking e bike. It is. The thing looks it is. shockingly good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it kind of has everything. There's two models, uh, same frame, but it uses different stroke shock and uh, two different um, links, right? Not, not links. Uh, Position changes on the link mm. uh, to get the flip different chips. travel. Yeah, flip chips. Flip chips. Flip chips. Flip chips. Um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> what was that? Term? Also, so flip chip. Flip, flip chip. <laughs> We're talking about a flip chip. Flip chip. Flip uh, chip. Change your geo. Flip yeah. Chip. They're, they're awesome. I've been riding the e bike uh, for about a month now. When's, when's the kind of a fish? I mean, they're launched, but when are they going to be readily available? Uh, first week of March. And we still have a few that have not been uh, pre ordered. So, mm. yeah. But they the first batch is almost completely sold out. So nice, yeah, That's yeah. Rad. It's cool. It's good. It's awesome to just. I, I literally still love to this day that about the mountain bike industry that two guys who are smart have some cash to throw around and know how to ride bikes and want to build a bike brand can still do it and they yeah. can build a really competitive, amazing mountain bike that goes toe to toe with all the best stuff. Like that's not. You can't do that with smartphones or cars oh, no. or cars, motorcycles. Yeah. Like, That's what there's I was a say. lot of industries where you can't just yeah. show up and be like, "Yeah, we made something as good as this Lamborghini." Like right? that just doesn't yep. doesn't work like that. But in the bike industry, you can still do that, which is it's just really cool, yeah. and inspiring, and cool to see small brands do that. And it's the kind of brands yeah. I like to support, and especially when they make good stuff like Crestline has. Yeah, totally. And it's it's really good. Um, I'm super impressed with it, and everything's the newest version of it. So even the box motor has a wireless controller. Nice. Which isn't on any other e-bike currently being sold. Wow. Yeah, so the cool. first bike to have it. So not only are they like coming out with a bike, but they're also coming out with a new bike from a small brand mm -hmm. that has the newest technology yeah. currently available from Bosch. Yeah. And really any e-bike. There's no wireless controllers right now. So yeah. are they are they still doing their YouTube channel? Uh, they slowed down on that yeah. a bit. Because because, for a while, they, it was pretty cool. They were talking yeah. a lot about the development of the bike and asking people in the comments, and that yeah. was actually pretty impressive. And, and they definitely off. got a lot from that, but Troy didn't end up moving to Bellingham. And when he was doing that, he was living down here in L.A. So, um, nice. Yep. Yeah, escaped the, the, what do you call it, the jungle of the, L.A.? The bubble. The concrete yeah. jungle. Concrete jungle. The jungle. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, not only does it like hang with bikes that are from way bigger manufacturers, it's debatably better than a lot of bikes yeah. out there right now, which is and so rad. The suspension has been tuned uh, by Cascade Components, who mm-hmm. are kind of experts in tuning suspension, and yep. especially for the aggressive rider, right? Uh, yeah. It's definitely geared towards, you know, someone who wants to ride an e bike hard downhill but have the motor going uphill. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm excited for the future of that brand. Definitely something worth looking into if you're interested in the e-bike side of things. And speaking of e-bikes, it uh, wasn't too long ago the IMBA, the International Mountain Bike Association, they came out with a little one-pager about e-bike, uh, I guess it's called the e-bikes on natural surface trails identification guide. I, I think e-bikes trying to lead the way, which which uh, I, I admire their their effort here. It seems like a complicated thing, and it's one of those pending questions that everyone's kind of looking around and says, well, who's going to do this? Who's going to go to national and state parks and ask them what e-bikes are allowed and how and when and why and how they're going to be classified and all that sort of stuff, especially now that there's sort of e-bike dirt bikes, motorcycles that are like don't have pedal assist but are super fast, and there's some that have pedal assist that are also super fast. So it's, I don't know, it's going to end up in this weird classification thing. Um, I grew up riding dirt bikes and there was a lot of laws around things. If it was, you know, under 50 cc's, you could ride it on this street. But if there was a bike lane and then there's the moped thing, it's like if it's an open thing, then I don't know. So, so weird. They had, yeah, it is kind of weird, but they have to classify these things some way or another. Yeah, definitely. IMBA seems to be sort of uh, taking the lead on doing this and put them into class one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. And it's dependent on, what is it dependent on? So... Let's see, class one, 750 watt motor or less, pedal assist only, Mm -hmm. max motor assisted speed of 20 miles per hour and no throttle. So that's class one. Uh, Class two, let's see, what's the difference? Oh, could have pedal assist and a pedal assist and a throttle. Mm -hmm. So not just a throttle, but pedal assist and a throttle. And then max assisted motor speed of also 20 miles per hour. Class three, also 750. Pedal assist only, max motor assisted speed of 28, mm-hmm. and no throttle. Then flying. F- yeah, flying. 28 miles per hour is <laughs> pretty, fast. Yeah, pretty fast on a bicycle. And then there's the unclassified electric bicycles slash EMTBs, then the electric motorcycles, then the other electric vehicles. And then they have a thing kind of saying, where can each e-bike slash EMTB most commonly be ridden? Anyways, it's, it's just a nice little one-pager about this stuff, and I think some trail systems – have already implemented this, you know, class one e-bike okay, class two and three no, or class one and two okay, class three and other no. I don't know. This this could be something that is relevant and important in the future, especially to people who are riding e-bikes. So if you just Google IMBA e-bike guide, you'll find this thing. Listener yes. questions. If and when wireless brakes become available, would you get them? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's Liam's answer. I'm Jared, gonna go. go ahead. Uh, I would try them, like maybe in the parking lot. I don't know if I would trust it, like on a full on ride. I don't know, maybe like a short ride, but actually, no, no. I'm gonna say no. I'd try in the parking lot, and that's it. Mm. I'm like, just I'd be freaked out. I think. You know. Okay, so my answer is basically also no, but <laughs> I I do wonder what. I don't know enough about the automotive industry, but I wonder what has happened over the years in the automotive industry with electronic everything, right? Mm-hmm. Because cars used to, cars evolved from being totally mechanical to now they're totally electronic. Not everything, right? Right. But they still have hydraulic the, brakes. They still have hydraulic brakes. But so why though? Because maybe they at some point, some manufacturer tried to say, hey, let's make the brakes electronic like we did with the throttle and the steering and everything else. Let's do it to the brakes. And then the Department of Transportation said, absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. Or maybe yeah. there was tests. I'm just curious. Well, I, I yeah. Maybe just somebody say... who's deep in the weeds of the Department of Transportation knows the answer to that. But, I mean, there's probably a reason that cars don't have it. And yeah. I just – I like the feel of mechanical everything. I, I still prefer that, even shifting. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a no-go on the wireless brakes. I just don't see the point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see the point. And like you're saying, there's there's no wireless brakes currently on the market. So, like, bikes are going to take that first leap? Like, yeah, I don't know. There's just – they're just not – brakes aren't bad enough that I would want to no. take some sort of risk to go yeah. to go wireless. With or, like, the cable isn't as, like, you know, it's not that big a deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a cable. Yeah. 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 Well, that was, that was pretty – but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens, being as, you know, yeah. random weird little inventions that oh, for have sure. negligible, if no, performance gains are introduced all the time in the bike it, industry. It'll honestly probably be heavier, too. 
than a current brake. Brakes are pretty light for how like powerful they Valid are. Valid point. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, how about this one? Pick one. Three foot long beard or three foot long butt hairs. Both are permanent. This is a good one. Um, I already thought about it. I'm going to go with a beard for sure because then I'd be a wizard. Um, yeah. Three foot long butt hairs would really hinder a lot of things in my life. Yeah, I mean, they'd basically almost go to the ground. Yep, I mean, so I pick, I pick the butt hairs. Oh no! <laughs> because I think you could, you could uh, hide them better. Oh, like a ponytail. I mean, if you wore pants, you wouldn't even see them. <laughs> if you wore pants, you wouldn't even see them. You, like a... you could find a way to. I mean, imagine wearing. Uh, you could just wear sort of like long johns, like yeah. leggings underneath your pants, and they would totally hide. Or it's like a tail, like a horse. Yeah. So like yeah, you could pull it out like that too. Yeah, and like that we you could do that on Halloween. You could brush it. You could do that for erotic occasions. Yeah, right. that would. Are you the erotic only person, occasions? Are you the only person in the world with this? <laughs> well, whoever says yes or no to the question, I guess gets them. That'd be all right. What's your answer? Um, you know, I thought about the I thought about this, and I was actually thought about butt hairs, but I think, mm, man. I, I just don't think I could get past like pooping with three foot long butt hairs, so I'm gonna go with the beard. I totally didn't remember that. Yeah, I just think that would be like yeah, you could such a you pain. You could part the sea. Oh, <laughs> you could have like move on. you could have like two <laughs> ponytails, like pigtails coming out of them. All right, <laughs> <Just gotta ride. laughs> the, the, ne- the next question Gross. is also. Oh no, this one's good. This is yeah, good, yeah. yeah. Bike brands and resale value. That is a good question. I wish we had more concrete data on it yeah it's because we have a, really... we have a lot of things like well we've seen this yeah. over our you know decade plus of experience in the bike industry which there's some you know credential there but it's not it's like the car industry that actually yeah. has a ton mm-hmm. of, you know, like the dmv would know like actually have well unless you lie to the dmv and, about and what you no, buy well, we haven't aggregated the data and, and there's we not, have not a, aggregated enough data to confidently Kelly's, give you an answer. Yeah, there's no Kelly's Blue Book. I mean, there's Bicycle Blue Book, but I don't know how accurate that is. No, because there, there, there's no there's no actual, like, source of record. Yeah. Whereas when you're talking about cars, there's an actual source of record. The DMV in that state knows the exact price a used car was sold for and what it was sold for new. So they have all that data. Um, bikes just don't have that. So frankly, yeah. there's no way you can give, like, a, a properly quantitative answer. Uh, qualitatively... I think that more boutique higher end brands typically hold their value a lot more mm-hmm. yeah. uh, because I mean, but that's just simple supply and demand. There's just less supply, right? right. Small boutique high end brands make less bikes. Um, they're typically a lot more. Uh, they're pushing the envelope in terms of geometry and component spec and, and suspension design and things like that, and therefore they sort of stay relevant longer. Whereas a lot of the big box brands, there there's so many of them, they flood the market, and therefore you just economics, supply yeah. and demand, they're not going to have as good a resale value, and they're also not pushing the envelope. So if something new comes out, such as a universal derailleur hanger from SRAM, or everyone wants a certain head angle or certain chainstay length, uh, those big box brands probably didn't push the envelope. Uh, whereas a lot of these small yeah. boutique brands did, and therefore those bikes are going to have more value for longer period of time. And yeah. we've definitely seen that over the course of our lives yeah yep. right? i mean yeah just throwing out there yetis sell pretty darn good um i've had some other bigger bike brands or even santa cruz for the matter i think they're out of the the boutique space yeah i think I yeah think they lost it unfortunately yeah, yeah. the other thing to they, consider they got too, too big too they popular did. yeah you know? they did they, which is great for them they got too big but yeah they're they're now on the on the bigger level of mountain bike sales yeah yeah. The, uh, the other thing to consider, too, is there's really hot, desirable boutique brands that are only well distributed in a small number of countries. True. So then when you, if you buy that bike because it's distributed well in your country, you go to sell it. Somebody from one of these countries that really wants one and can't afford a new one because there's no local distributor or retailer mm. there goes and buys one used from you. And the resale value happens to be really high, whereas those countries probably have great distribution of all the big box bike brands. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Do you remember when Canyon was first coming about? And I didn't, oh, yeah. they didn't really make mountain bikes that much. It was kind of a road brand. And I was, I was riding a lot of road at the time. I thought they were so rad. Um, and I wanted one so bad. Uh, and then, you know, they came to the U.S. And now they're massive. And, you know, they're good bikes, but they're just kind of bikes now. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they lost that appeal in the U.S. But they used to have it. Whereas, like, I would have bought a used one from a dude in Germany back in yeah. the day. Yep, totally. <laughs> yep. 
well, I don't know. I think that is something good to consider. Because I, I also tell people, because people a lot of times be like, oh, man, it's so bikes are so expensive. It's like, well, they're also like cars. They're, you're buying an actual asset. Yes, it's a depreciating asset, yeah. but it's an asset. You buy yeah. that thing and you can resell it. It's, it's not like you're throwing the money in the garbage can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like you can you can resell these things. And as Absolutely. long as you ruin it and you sell it in a reasonable amount of time, you're still yeah. going to, you know, it's still something. Yeah. Agreed. So anyways, that's my take on all of that. Yeah. Hey, how about the Santa Cruz Bikes founder, Rob Roskap, riding that Uno? Yep. It cracks me up. He's got that out. Uno e-bike, and he yeah. posted it on his personal Instagram, and yeah. it was like all over Pink Bike, and everyone's like, what's yeah. going on here, man? Is he going to work for Uno now? Yeah, and yeah. everyone's like, they did a Pink Bike podcast with him, but mm-hmm. I, could, I just couldn't listen to it all. Did you I, listen I, to I didn't know. I read the interview. I, yeah. sk- I skimmed the interview, I should say. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of sounds like, I mean, long story short, Santa Cruz got bought by Pond Group. A couple years ago, he had a what sounded like a three to five year contract. Uh, that contract ran out this year. They couldn't come to agreement on a new contract, so he was separated. Sayonara. From, yeah, separated from Santa Cruz. Um, he has worked with Cesar Rojo of Uno Bikes in the past and hit him up, and I guess got a bike, and he's been liking it. So nice. Said yeah. some very good things about Said that. Some Uno. Very he good did. things about that. Mm-hmm. Um, the boost, yeah. Just Has it been a crest line though? Mm. Has yeah, maybe. I guess not. No, no. Yeah, we would probably know. Maybe Troy would have told us if he did. Oh yeah, I would know. That Uno e bike, all those new Unos, pretty wild, man. A little yeah. polarizing, but you see it in person and you realize that it's just like you know yeah. the prior it's, Unos that yeah. had a different Fun- design, that functional like, art. Whoa, that is a seriously good looking. Yeah, I'm sure it rides bike. like really well. I mean, I would love to try one. Agreed. All right, next question. Read it off, Jared. By how many points will Fire crush the B team at Mass Enduro Champs this year? At least by one point. <laughs> yeah, at least one. So so we we sponsor a number of uh, amateur racers, amateur race teams. I love. I think it's just an important thing to support people that are doing good things in the industry. And uh, two of the teams happen to be very competitive in the uh, whole East Coast side of the country, Enduro races, uh, Fire is the name of one team, and then the B team is the other team, and they're just in—they're in fierce competition with each other right now. It's, it seems friendly and funny, but it, yeah. they also just don't. Neither of them stop talking about it. So yeah. fire, fire, maybe it's not that friendly. Fire is like, also all female team, correct? Yeah, I was going to say they don't even compete like in the same races. Yeah. technically. Well, yeah. I, so I think fire has ch- uh, evolved a little or okay. changed. Okay. Um, but I also think that it's—it's it's not necessarily the the per racers. I think what happens is like you you get a certain number. You you have a team. Yeah, a team overall. A team overall, right? So even if none of the racers directly compete with each other, there's a team overall. Okay. And and they were tied coming to the last race last year, and then fire ended up winning. And no it was way. A big ordeal. And, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I was giving him yeah. jokes the got- other day, like. The B team, I gave him some discount for something, and I was like, I gave one percent bigger discount to the fire team because they beat you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did, love yanking their chains. Did you see the meme I sent in that? Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Why can't good. you just go faster, <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kirk? That's amazing. <laughs> that cool. uh, nice. Well, anyways, if if you have a, an enduro race team, or you're a uh, enduro racer, or downhill racer, or any kind of racer, and you're diehard love mountain bikes, and you're looking for sponsors, reach out. Um, I can't guarantee anything because we have limited budgets and parameters, but we we can you know we do like supporting that stuff. Next question. Next question. Hot tips for flying with your bike like you do on your chasing epic trips? It's a good question. Uh, my hot tip is an Evoc bag and pool noodles. And, and Liam can elaborate. Liam do it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what Jeff said. Evoc bag. Yep. Pool noodles are – that blew my mind when I first started here. And Jeff's like, no, go get pool noodles. I'm like, why did I never think of that? They're so cheap. And yeah. – the They're way that they, they bend, you like fold them around. You can cut them up and put them around parts, but you can also <laughs> leave them whole and like have them bend around your bike. And it actually like keeps the bag off your bike and therefore other stuff off your bike. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I also kind of like to take my rotors off. I know it's like. Yeah, that's hit or miss. But yeah, you have center or, lock. It's hit or miss. Yeah, if you have center lock, I say just bring the tool and take them off. Um, they're going to fall off. You're going to need the tool anyway because they're going to fall off while you're riding. 
Have, have yours ever fallen off while you're riding? They've never fallen off, but I have seen so many center lock rotors come loose. Not of, like of so many, but other people that don't check their bikes, like. Well, okay, yeah. I do. If if you don't. Okay. 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 If you don't um, maintain your bike, six bolt rotors are a better better way to go. Yeah. Fair. Sure. Maintain your bike yeah. and check how tight your rotors are. Center locks. Just um, what else? Uh, I, take I, off I just, your derailleur. Take off your chain. Yeah, derailleur off, chain off. Pedals, obviously. Um, pedals. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a, a good bag. Investing in a good bag is those Evoc bags last forever. Yeah, you'll yeah. have one. Talk about another thing that's an asset, not a throwaway. If you buy an Evoc bag and you use it twice a year, it's it's amazing and useful. And if you all of a sudden decide you're never going to travel with your bike again, every mountain biker you know will want to buy that Evoc yeah. bag used from you. They're yeah, what, 300, so. 350, 400 bucks or something. Something like, like that. that. Yeah, they make um, like the regular and the pro. Yeah, and um, if you're flying with a five thousand dollar bike, it's like a bike rack on your car. It's like yeah, just bite the bullet and yeah. buy the nice bike rack that's yeah. not going to damage your bike. And you could fly anywhere with your bike you safely, fly anywhere, which is yeah. sick. I um, mean, I had never flown with my bike until I started working here, and it's it's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's kind of it. It's and then uh, I recommend it. Full noodles is the is yeah. the big one that yeah. I think people will be like, "Whoa, I never thought of that." Yeah. Yeah, that's super helpful. You yeah. can even chop up the pool noodles all intricately and put them over the handlebars. Mm-hmm. Like you cut out a piece of the foam that goes over your stem, the forks, piece of the yeah. foam that goes over the the brakes and the shifter, and then yeah, for the fork stanchions. Yeah, pool noodles are the way to go. Yeah, yeah. so definitely. There you go. Mm-hmm. Well, how about this one, Jeff? I know you love socks. Oh, I love talking about fabrics. Oh yeah, you do. Uh, wool socks versus normal, which I guess they probably mean some sort of well, uh, synthetic cotton. material, cotton or spandex cotton or spandex like, or, or, or something. Okay, and your favorites. All right. I got this one. This all is right. a deep answer. Five minutes. You That's all you got. got. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about this for more than five minutes. More than five minutes. All right, minutes. here's the deal. Uh, the most sort of comfy, luxurious socks are, are likely cotton or Pima cotton. Cotton is great for just like daily wear when you're not exercising. It's soft. It absorbs. This is a key part is why it's comfortable. It absorbs the sweat that comes off of your feet. And that's great for daily wear. Where cotton is no good is activity. So when you start moving and sweating and doing all of that sort of stuff, you don't want the sock to absorb all of that sweat because then it never dries. And then it becomes a piece of soggy wetness around your foot for God knows how long. Mm. Um, And that's why technical socks, or if you look at like running socks or mountain biking socks or hiking socks, they're all not cotton usually, or there's some like very small percentage of cotton in there. The rest of it is some type of uh, nylon and and mostly merino wool. That's what I'm a huge fan of because it's a moisture wicking fabric that just has really good temperature regulation, really good moisture wicking, uh, works amazing. I got so deep in the weeds of this. I mean, as we started and have been building kettle, that's like we talk about fabrics all the time for your whole body, but especially socks. Uh, merino wool is amazing. We, when we made the kettle socks, we went to New Zealand to have them made in New Zealand out of New Zealand merino wool with like a, a technical blend. So a little bit of merino wool, a little bit of nylon, a little bit of spandex. So it's all durable, wicks moisture, um, doesn't create hot spots. We also made them in warm weather, cool weather, and fair weather. So three different types for weather and thickness that you want. So those are my favorite socks. Uh, I designed them for myself for multiple different climates. <laughs> nice. uh, was that less than five minutes? Yeah, way less. That was like a, like yeah. one or two minutes. That was really good. But yeah. So yeah. The, the moral of the story is like if, if you're going out for an hour in f- normal weather, you can probably get away with anything. Um, if you're traveling with something or you're going out for longer than an hour uh, or you're going out in harsh weather conditions, be it cold or hot or wet, uh, you got you to gotta rethink the fabric types that you're wearing around your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I love the, the, what are they, the full warm weather. Yeah. Kettle socks. Oh, the the thinner ones. Yeah, yeah the one thinnest ones. Yeah. ones. Those are my favorite socks. I, I like them all time. I like them all, honestly. They're all great. They all have the use case for different. Yeah, they do weather conditions. Yeah, I like the padding on the on the cold ones. Yeah, like the extra padding on the bottom. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. My pro tip: if you're doing something real ridiculous, like 15 miles plus of running or hiking, uh, there's a sock brand called Ingini. And makes toe socks. I love those. Like a super lightweight, thin toe sock. Uh, Looks ridiculous. Uh, Put that on and then put a thin sock such as the Kettle uh, warm weather sock over the top of that. So then you have two on there. That'll like pretty much solve all of your blisters and a million other things. Mm. But not necessarily unless you're doing some some big dog stuff. Yeah. Running or or long hike. Yeah. Or I guess if you're prone to blisters. Yeah. At that point, if you're like really prone to blisters, you might want to consider... What's going on with your shoes? Yeah. 
then we could have a whole podcast talking about shoes because I like that topic too. <laughs> it's a mountain bike podcast, so we'll yeah. move on. So let's move on with... An ad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> an ad from our sponsor. Nailed it. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hello, mountain bikers. Jeff again. Something I personally believe in is that businesses should be operating in a way that supports the industry they're in and generally doing good for the world in their own unique way. This was largely the idea behind Trail One Components. Trail One was an idea that spawned years ago to build a brand that creates top shelf mountain bike components while simultaneously giving back to trail networks. Worldwide Cyclery has a stake in Trail One alongside Brian Kennedy, a.k.a. BKXC, as well as one highly overqualified engineer. We have made some components so far that we are extremely proud of and that nail down exactly what we have always wanted ourselves on our own bikes. We would be forever grateful if you checked out Trail One Components to scope out what we have to offer. As a thanks, use the code PODCAST25 to snag 25% off your entire order at checkout. You can shop Trail One on the WC site or at trailone.bike. Again, that code is P-O-D-C-A-S-T-2-5. And now, back to the show. All right. Speaking Does which, anyone at the shop wear knee pads? Yes and no. Well, oh. that would just be yes. Yeah. So. Well, no. I mean, like, for me, I wear, like, on a daily ride, I would do not wear knee pads. But if I'm going to go to the bike park, I'll put knee pads on. Yeah. Mm. I'm kind of in the same boat. I almost never wear knee pads unless I'm on a downhill bike specific at a bike park yeah Yeah, i don't i don't really either to be honest and even sometimes i go shuttling without knee pads and i put long pants on and people ask me if i have knee pads on i say yes (laughs) uh because i don't want to like jinx myself but i hate wearing them so off so much yeah there's Um, a lot of nice knee pads now that are really thin and light and move with your knee well but I feel what like, do, what do those know. even do then? Like when you crash, like, yeah, they, like they just most of the time, scrape. the first yeah. the first contact with the ground, then they slide, yeah. and then you hit the ground a second time, and then you cut your knee open. Part of me feels like there's this thing, like if you're putting knee pads on, you're jinxing yourself. That's what Remy that's Morton says. Like you're gonna put your knee pad on yeah, because yeah, you're yeah. gonna crash. That's what, that's that's what Remy Morton says. But he also like knee pads I, or gloves. Well, that guy's and he nuts. A full face and a neck brace, so he lives from a crash. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Irrelevant case study. <laughs> but I feel like if I'm going to go ride on a normal ride that I do like almost every day, and if I crash and like scrape my knees, then I probably deserved it. Yeah. Right? Like I, think, I probably did something dumb enough where yeah. I deserved it. I, I think on your daily rides, if, if you commonly crash and scrape your elbows and knees, then it would make sense for you to wear those pads. If you almost never crash, then... Just don't wear pads. Yeah. yeah. I, my Unless you rule, really love to. I don't know. My rule love is kind of like 140, 150 of rear travel or more. I wear knee pads. Under that, I'm pedaling too much and, you know, I'm not, not really going to wear them. Yeah. Um, however, Jeff did kind of start making me wear gloves after I ripped my palm open. Couldn't work on bikes for a while. Yeah. I mean, so gloves are a different thing. Yeah, I mean, I I just think that that's one. It's not they're not as you know intrusive um, as yeah. cumbersome as knee pads. And all of us at the end of the day, I think most people work with their hands in some capacity, whether it's on a keyboard or with real tools. Typically, most yeah typically, use their hands. Typically, most people use their hands <laughs> on a daily for, basis. for work, and it's pretty easy to scrape your hands up when you crash. Yeah, so if you have yeah. no gloves on, you can toast your hands. So. Yeah. Although I do love the feeling of riding with no gloves. Oh, like, I, I agree. I used to only raw dog. Like, yeah, I used to only raw dog. Like, like it's amazing. Yeah. Um, it's just, there's that something that is... Came and gone. Yeah, not quantifiable there, but it's great. Uh, all right, this is good. This question is good. Read it, Jared. Does low-speed compression settings, or technically it's do low-speed compression settings, affect sag when setting up your suspension? Yes. Yes. Should practice setting up sag with pretty much no compression on your shock, high High speed or low speed. Mm. And that also goes for saying, which I mean, assume, but you don't want to assume, uh, you want your shock in the open position if it's like a rear shock or a fork with a lockout. Mm. Yes, you're right. You don't want to assume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people that have covered this on YouTube and in articles, us included. Oh yeah. Uh, we have a great video that's quite in depth and an article that Liam himself can tell you extensively on how to set up your suspension and your sag and all of that. Suspension is largely 
personal preference, but there's also like still a range you need to be in. So yeah. you're not totally off. Right. Um, so if you're new to the sport, definitely check that out and learn how to set your sag properly. And yes, low speed okay. compression or any compression or any setting should be any compression related setting should be totally off when you're setting your sag. Yep. And there's also other resources like the RockShox Trailhead app. Mm -hmm. and Fox's tuning system as well as... Yeah, that helps you if you have a RockShox yeah. Rear Shocker Fork or a Fox Rear Shocker and Fork then, and a certain bike that's in their uh, catalog. Fox Dialed Series with Jordy goes yeah. over a lot of... Those are good. Those are really good. Sag and bracketing and all that nerdy stuff that you can get down the weeds in, which we're not going to here. Yeah. Yep, I was just looking at our article... Uh, which, Jared, don't forget to put this in the show notes. Mountain mm. bike suspension setup, how to set sag compression and rebound. Uh, this is a really good article. I didn't realize how in-depth this was. Nice work, Liam. There's a lot of stuff here. Thanks, man. Video. I don't know when I did that. <laughs> it was published in... A couple years ago. Uh, yeah, February 2021. Oh, that's not that long ago. Yeah. 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 So wow. anyways, a lot of good resources there. But that is important to get your suspension set up correctly. It's something worth learning about if you're new to the sport or just want to get better at the sport and make your bike work oh, yeah. better for you. Um, that's a huge one. Cork Shockwiz. That's oh, another yeah. cool product yeah. that people love. Little little pricey, but a really cool thing to use and play with that connects to your suspension and gives you all sorts of information if your suspension's too soft or too stiff or your rebound is too fast or too slow. Um, it's all connected to an app. It's all Bluetooth enabled. It records everything. It's a really fun tool. We also have a YouTube video on that product because it's just a really interesting, unique, cool, yeah. useful product. That is cool. And it's still unbelievably used one educational about helps, suspension. Yeah, it helps you learn a lot about suspension. Um, and I personally think this is like shooting ourselves in as a retailer in the foot, but I think getting your suspension set up is probably more valuable than most upgrades you can do on your bike. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you you could certainly make the argument that you shouldn't be really getting many upgrades at all uh, until you really have maximized the use out of all of your existing parts. Yeah, be it suspension or anything else. Well said. Well said. Well said. Yeah, well, how about this? Can we get a Craigslist mountain bike challenge part two? So for those of you that don't know, uh, years ago, when did we do that? Uh, 2019? 2019, I think. So maybe even 2018. So we did this thing called the Craigslist yeah. mountain bike challenge where a lot of people in the shop participated. I think we had about eight racers. And the challenge was uh, you had a $50 budget and you had to spend the $50 on a bike from Craigslist. Mm-hmm. Um, and the accessories you could and, accessorize yeah, so if your it bike was 30 or upgrade it. If your bike was $30. Then you could spend $20 on <laughs> upgrades. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get you much, which we were surprised <laughs> at the upgrades you could get for the amount of money. Like True. I got a whole set of tires for like 10 bucks. So, yeah. so the, so the parameters of this race were you have $50 and you have to buy a bike on Craigslist for 50 bucks. And then we're going to do sort of an, an omnium style race where you race up this trail called dead cow down this trail called suicide, which is a pretty rocky, gnarly downhill trail. And Dead Cow is a really challenging, steep, rocky climb. So, yeah, there's basically an uphill winner, a downhill winner, but then a, an overall winner. And that, we made a YouTube video of that. It was a ton of fun. It was. Uh, <laughs> it was hard. It was hard. Did I was you, like, Did you compete? I did compete, yeah. yeah. I bought a, man, I don't remember, might have been a Schwinn or something. but The best, by the way, if you have a $50 budget to buy a mountain bike right now, your best bet is to find uh, a, a really old good mountain bike yeah like a mountain bike that was good 20 years ago yeah for 50 dollars, as opposed to a toys r us bike like yeah. that's a yeah you got a way better chance that's actually the bike that won was like a 1991 specialized rigid something yeah well uh, it's also because with uh, like xt on it. logan malali was riding oh well, yeah that's true yeah, <laughs> like a world cup worthy downhill racer <laughs> employee yeah. no, logan, logan malali legitimately put in like a top 20 time down this trail which has like top, <laughs> it, all, all the top 20 people are pros yeah and he put in like a time that was good enough for a top 20 yeah on this rigid 90s mountain bike yeah impressive that was gnarly yeah it was gnarly. he was going fast um, on yeah. that bike Get, getting back to the question i do have an idea for like a second version uh -huh. maybe involving mini bikes and like more obstacles Pixie and less bikes. yeah yeah and less uh like downhill trail yeah um make it more like a, a stage race you know like four or five stages mm -hmm. could be cool yeah maybe or like me, a relay get bored 
really. That'd be I'm, fun. I'm interested in something that involves an alligator pit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Strawberry cheesecake pie smashing things. I don't know, something like that. Like right yeah. across the skinny while people throw things at you. The hot wing race alligators. was fun. That was cool. We, we did yeah. it. We did a hot wing race where you had to do laps around a track while eating increasingly hot wings each lap that you mm-hmm. completed. And also a beverage on the wheel, which was yeah. out of pickle you juice. To, yeah. You had to spin a wheel. Milk. And, yeah. Milk. Milk or beer or water, right? Or and like then non-alcoholic. One, and then one and was then three. And one, no, it was it was all of them. All, so it was a yeah. combination oh, God, of was, milk, yeah, pickle the juice. The death cup or whatever. Oh, it was called death cup. Yeah. It was basically oh, just all of those options combined. The, somebody drank the death cup multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Someone yeah, had yeah, yeah. to oh, Disgusting. Yep. God. Google. Um, I don't know. Those challenges are fun. They were fun. But there's also yeah. a little bit of liability involved in those things. Yeah, let's not get into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Earlier on in my business career, I thought about that less. Later on in my business career, I thought about it more, if we're being honest. We got waivers, dude. Let's yeah. do it. It's, that's, that's true. Yeah. We could do waivers. We could pay a lawyer $5,000 to create waivers for our employees to do totally dangerous things. No, we could download Sounds that. Like we, we have a couple of lawyers. We could lawyer. find that. We could use customers. chat GPT to write that <laughs> waiver. <laughs> We probably have some lawyer customers who are like, dude, we'll we'll bargain. Yeah. Right this up. I'm sure we could download a waiver off. We could That's just true. borrow like Big Bear's waiver and then <laughs> <laughs> put in our own stipulations. Scribble there. out Big Bear and just yeah. write worldwide in, in pen. Exactly. Control F, replace all. We got plenty of uh, Photoshop <laughs> wizards here. All right. This is a great question. I actually had a hard time coming up with the answer to this one. What's the worst ride you've ever been on? That, yeah, I mean. I don't know. I thought about that. I mean, I, I, I thought about a couple of things. First thing that came to mind last, I think it was, I don't know, August or September. I went out on a ride when I knew it was just way too hot. Yeah. It was a bad idea. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go on the last, in golden hour, last hour of the day. It was a horrible idea because then that setting scorching hot sun was just lighting my head on fire and my face on fire. It was just miserable. Yeah. And and I I'd skipped lunch, but still wanted to try and get, it was just the whole whole oh, thing was bad. No. That was that was a little rough. But the the other one that came to mind was uh was was actually was in uh where did we ride in that cow poop? I I oh, thought about that. Durango? Was that Durango? That was Durango. Was, yeah, it was Durango, yeah. right? The worst? Well, I mean, it was kind of brutal. It wasn't. It, it, it wasn't a bad ride. It just had too much cow poop. Yeah, yeah. It, it it was like the not not the right time of year to ride that trail, and a lot of cows had gone down it, and there was just fresh, steaming, moist, well, hot. giant we piles of cow dung. Yeah, we were chasing would, them, and they were pooping yeah, on the trail and then as they we were going down. The trail, yeah, they would block the trail. Yeah, poop on the trail. You'd run, you there would be no choice but to run over the poop, and it would fling onto your yeah. bike, all over your yeah. bike, all over your. It just oh. your face. So it was really hard to mouth. maintain so a, much. Yeah, it was. It was hard to maintain a positive attitude. Yeah. On that. and that was a bummer because that was a fun. I thought it was a fun. The trail, trail was great. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was just was. covered in cow dung. Yeah, we did like five thousand feet or something of descending. Like yeah. it was yeah. sick. And then, yeah, I, I don't think I maintained my positive attitude very much. Yeah, I you think, definitely did. I think I got quiet. <laughs> you I, did, I yeah, you were not I, stoked. I wasn't, I wasn't like a dick. I just got quiet and was like, I'm over this. I'm going to get back to the car. Yeah. I had to dig deep to try and maintain a positive yeah. attitude on that one. There's a lot of dad jokes getting thrown around on yeah. that when it was like, <laughs> I don't even want to go there, yeah. but there's a lot of dad jokes. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's funny for a while. Yeah. Changing diaper dad jokes. Which, yeah. 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 Um, but I don't know. I, I'm going to go with, uh, you, like when you said you went on the hot ride, like that's what came to mind. Like I thought of a couple of times where I had like a couple bad mechanicals or like, you know, you had a hike out from uh, like a busted chain or, you know, flat tire. But I think a hot, like a ride that's just too hot and you're like suffering is, and honestly, a lot of the time when a bad is a ride is that bad, it just gets blocked out of my mind. I just like never yeah, want to think of it ever just again. Just write it know? off, eh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, Didn't write work it off. That time. Yeah, I kind of I like those because they're like challenges in a way. Yeah, I don't know for sure. But like sometimes but when some you're challenges like, just aren't that fun. Like when <laughs> cow fresh, wet, moist, <laughs> disgusting cow poop is flinging all over your yeah. face because you can't miss it. Yeah. yeah, that was that was rough. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's what I got. <laughs> all right, yeah. Jeff. Same. Next question is, will Jeff ever not be a weight weenie? Dang. Uh, odds are, at this point in my life, the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah. I just like light bikes. I think it's useful to have a very lightweight bike and optimize your various components to be high performance and lightweight and balance right. that. I convinced Jeff on his new bike build, which we'll get into in the next few podcasts, mm-hmm. uh, 
two parts I convinced you on that are a little bit heavier, oh. but might deliver a better ride quality and or are just a little bit more different, more unique. So it's also mm-hmm. a more a solid sixty mil travel bike. So yeah, exactly. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is like and, and, you built a by, downhill and, bike, it's not by, gonna be by heavier. English. We're talking like fifty grams Oof. here, fifty grams there. That's a big compromise. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're not going to be a weight weenie like if you build a downhill bike, right? Like you're. Well, that's not necessarily Jeff true. Might be. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming to find out that the bigger travel bikes actually enjoy the weight in the right spots. Right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, but like I mean, you wouldn't. There's just no way like, to avoid that. It's yeah. impossible to build a yeah. eight inch but, travel downhill. Yeah, bike but like in a light way. To, they don't to me, make like lightweight downhill forks. Yeah, if there's a carbon frame that was a pound lighter versus alloy frame, like I might just go for the alloy frame because. it's just got a little bit more weight in in a good spot, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want super heavy tires and wheels, but yeah, you know. But like, you wouldn't put EXO, EXO tires on a downhill bike, Jeff. Hmm. Oh well, come, no way. Depends on where I was riding. EXO tires on a downhill bike. Yeah, but if you're riding in areas that aren't super rocky, somebody my size, I could get away with it. <laughs> Sus. <laughs> Hey, would you rather ride with no brakes or no saddle? Can I also remove the uh, seat post? <laughs> no. no way. Oh, no. Post. Really? Mm. Dude, that is like, oh, that's really sketch. Um, I guess I'm... S- I mean, I rode a bike with no brakes for a lot of years of my life. Yeah, um, BMX bike. BMX bike. I mean, you can you got- do... So- yeah, but a, but a mountain bike? Like, you know, <laughs> it's pretty useless with no brakes. Yeah, but you can't. Depending kind of, on where you're riding, you though, you can do like too many yeah. steep roll-ins without a saddle. I guess it could be a dirt jump bike or something like that. The mm. No saddle, you could really get away with riding, but it's it's just a risk. <laughs> big risk. <laughs> it's, a big risk. <laughs> it's just a risk. Yeah, it's a big just one. a risk. I'm you gonna know. go no brakes because then I guess yeah, you could it could be. It depends on the bike. It doesn't say what kind of bike it is. So yeah, I'm gonna say. I don't even have to answer that because it doesn't have to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to answer it. <laughs> you would go no brakes. You said, yeah, you're comfortable I mean, with that. Body wise, I would go probably go no brakes and yeah. try to just throw the back end around a lot. But yeah, like a. You're not that, any steep that would stuff. be fun depending like on where you're riding. Yeah. You just could or couldn't get away with it. Yeah, like you're skiing or something. Like Sedona? Probably yeah. not riding no brakes. Yeah, yeah. Probably not. But that would also be a scary place to ride with no saddle. That too. <laughs> <laughs> so riding some loam up north? Both, both of those options just. I just an infinite number of things run through my head yeah. that sound like bad scenarios. <laughs> um, favorite time of day to ride? Mm. I think I know both of your answers. It's morning. Well, I'm a real morning person. Jared's like a mid morning person. That's really tough. I <laughs> mid morning. I know. I don't. Well, deny what time that. do you ride on the weekends when you have nothing else? Yeah, playing? I'll ride in the morning. I guess because yeah. um, like I usually just want to. Or like nine thirty a.m. or ten a.m. Eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Because, like, on a weekend, I don't want to wake up super early. But also, on the flip side, like, I'd love a, uh, like, a golden hour ride on the Sunday. Like, you know. That just, is nice. Like, the best way to end the weekend. Romantic. Go into the week, like, golden hour ride. Do you have any plans Sunday? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, I like morning. And, yeah. Uh, like, pretty much if I can be on my bike around sunrise, which is right now, like, 7-ish, 6.30. Um, I like that. I like to maximize as much time as I can, and I don't sleep well, so I'm up early anyway, so. There you go. I like to ride uh, anytime from 11 a.m. to sunset. Oh. Yeah. That's a uh, that's a broad range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeff is not. Jeff, me and Jeff are probably the opposite. I like, I like to wake to f- up, have slow mornings. Uh, relax, get a little work done, catch up on things, then get ready, then go ride. I like a slow morning too. I don't like feeling rushed getting out of the house, you know? Same. This is an interesting question. Do you know the answer? No. Not really. Oh, I do. So the, the answer is what happened to Issy Stomp Pedals? Well, the so, question is that. You said the answer. Uh, well, I was reading the question for the. <laughs> no, you said the answer is what happened to oh, Issy Stomp Pedals. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sorry about that, oh, guys. Geez. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Issy Stomp Pedals. So Issy, I-S-S-I, uh, they made some really good pedals, SPD versions. The Stomp Pedals in particular were some really nice flat pedals. 
that I love. Yeah, I really like them. Super I good design. Still have them on my dirt jumper to yeah. this day. And I think we talked about them on YouTube ages ago. Yeah, yeah. they're in like a top flat pedal video or something like uh, that. So, <clears throat> so oh, was this publicly announced? I don't know. Who knows? I'm just gonna say it anyway. Uh, so Issy was is Issy is a brand owned by a, one of the key like big distributors in the industry called QBP. They make a lot of good brands. Um, and they decided to discontinue the Issy brand. I don't know why, but they, they changed it to, they have another brand called MSW. So MSW hmm. now has taken over all the Issy products. Weird. Has that happened? Pretty much. Yeah. So it's sort of in the oh, process okay. that, that was, that whole plan was, like was, was put in place and COVID, starting right? to come to fruition yeah. pre COVID and then COVID like ruined the whole supply chain thing. And then, so the new MSW branded pedals that were formerly Issy pedals never showed up for a hundred years, things like that. That's weird. But yeah. So, so if you're interested in those pedals, cause those are really good pedals, a really good design. They are now rebranded as MSW. Hmm. Um, question about the question. Yeah. Do you think that their original attention was to call them the stamp pedals and then they realized that Crank Brothers had stamps and they were like, we're just going to call them stomps? No, because I think they came out before <laughs> I, the Crank I Brothers. I do think they came pedals. out before Crank Brothers. Really? Yeah. I, I think so. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh. Then. And both. Ah. Actually, stomp makes more sense for a pedal it than does. the word stamp. Probably. Stomp. Yeah. yeah stomp like it on it. Stomp. Yeah. Like that has something to do with your foot, whereas yeah. stamp. Well, you doesn't. could also stamp maybe like a stampede. <laughs> Yeah, stampede pedals would make more sense than <laughs> stampede. What is your favorite soup? Why? What is this question? Why is this question here? What's your favorite soup? I don't know. Somebody asked it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared loves food, and he uh, picks I love food. It's a food question. Right, Why wouldn't answer, I put it in there? Move on. Um, phew, wow. Does oh. chili count? Oh, Probably not. I don't know. Depends uh. on your definition of soup. I like a really hearty, like chicken noodle or chicken tortilla soup with a ton of chicken i like Like, a chicken tortilla soup i don't really like the broth just pretty much like make it like a yeah you know uh i can't really say my number one right now but i'll narrow it down to three chicken tortilla (laughs) (laughs) chicken tortilla because you said it and that sounded really good chicken noodle and a uh tomato soup like with a grilled cheese Mm. yeah solo or group rides jeff both. Mm. Yeah, I like both. Both. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I like riding alone a lot. Um, it's just convenient and easy. You don't have to worry about it, worry about anyone, plan about anything. You just do your own thing. Um, but it's also super fun to ride with good people and have a good time. And yeah. You know, mountain biking is very social and fun like that. So group yeah. rides are right. good. I mean, if you want to be efficient, solo, 100%. Yeah. For sure. If you, know, if you want to be social and drag. goof off and have the weekend to yourself or a lot of free time, then yeah, obviously group rides. Mm hmm. Yeah, I yeah. like a good solo mission for two reasons. One, if you make it long enough and hard enough, it's like super mentally challenging to like make yourself keep going. Yeah. Um, and two, like a lot of thoughts go through your mind when you're on the bike for like six, seven hours. Yeah, solo. yeah totally. So it's it's you know. like a, a reset, yeah. if you it's will. It's therapeutic. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. And I'm going to agree. Love solo ride. Um, but yeah, there's sometimes like – you know, I don't get to ride with like my really good friends, uh, you know, outside of work very often. But when I do that, it's like, it's, it's really fun. Love doing that. Obviously yep. love riding with my work boys as well. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Is it okay to wear my kettle bib by itself without any covering? Of course. Mm-hmm. Scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> if you bought the bib, you can do anything you want in you the bib. <laughs> <laughs> the Kettle Canyon bib was was not originally designed to be worn with by itself. Uh, it was it was designed to be worn with shorts over top of it. Um, although it's fine to do so because it's it doesn't have like a see through mesh fabric or any type of weird fly or anything like that. So yes, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't really originally designed for that. But it doesn't really matter. Didn't Angerman wear it by itself almost like every day at breakfast? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. A lot of people do. A yeah. lot of people who are, I mean, because people love that bib and the pockets and the chamois and a lot of them, uh, those people don't like wearing shorts over their bib. So a lot of people do wear the kettle bib like that. And it, again, it wasn't originally designed for that. Um, the very first version of it did have a, a little flap over fly, which might have looked weird. They yeah. don't have that anymore, so then it makes it even more acceptable to wear without shorts. But the seams and stuff were not really engineered to like look yeah. clean. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Most people don't care. So the answer is yes. 
Yeah. But we are, we are going to, so the kettle bib is one of the most popular kettle products. Um, it's just good chamois, good pockets, good build quality. And we are going to make a ultra lightweight version that's mm. got a lot more mesh fabric <clears throat> on it. Um, so it's just kind of like a hot weather bib. Does the chamois get smaller? I don't know. So that's that's still up to up to debate. Um, then we're going to make a utility bib. So it'll have even more, like it'll of course have the same three pockets, but it'll have an additional zipper pocket mm-hmm. hidden behind one of the three pockets and then two sort of phone and, and or goo gel nutrition pockets on the side. Nice. So I don't know. That's, that's what's coming mm-hmm. down in the pipeline, but don't hold your breath because it'll probably be another nine months. Should I dig it. That, call that the Perez bib? Perez? Mm-hmm. What does that have to do with For Jorge? Jorge. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah, because he is the one. Yeah, he's a friend of ours, a customer who did who wants the zipper pocket. Even though he, that's only Bibby wears, and he's like, I always put my phone there, it never falls out, but I still want it to be zipped. Yeah. Up. <laughs> he's like, well, has it fallen out? No, it's never fallen out, but I want yeah. it zipped. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, hey, man. I'm into reassurance too, so I don't blame him. Um. Well. That's all we got, boys. That's all the questions. Yeah, that was all of them. Wow. We if you're still listening, thank it. you very much. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you would leave us a positive review wherever you get your podcast, uh, most importantly, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you do so, leave the review, screenshot it, send it to Jared. At podcast at worldwidecyclery.com. Yeah, that's the email. That's the best place to send that's it. That's the best place? <laughs> that, that is that the is 100%. Rather, than, place. rather than an Instagram DM? Yep, 100%. Okay, email it. You got to email it to podcast yeah. at worldwidecyclery.com and Jared will give you a surprise. A, it's not a surprise anymore. It's a $15 <laughs> credit to Worldwide Cyclery. <laughs> 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 and uh, also, thank you everybody who has been sending those in. It's really nice to see all the positive feedback and love from the community and listeners. So yeah, thank you. we appreciate that. And if there's anything you guys want us to talk more about or less about, or I don't know, adjust the podcast in any way, let us know. We're always open to constructive criticism, be it nice or mean or anywhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, at least I am. Are you, are you okay with that? Uh, yeah, I guess. As long as it's not about me. Don't hurt Jerry's <laughs> feelings. <kidding>, so. <laughs> <laughs> don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. And we will catch you guys in a couple weeks. We are doing these podcasts now every other week on the dot for all of 2023. Yeah. So for not on Valentine's Day because Jared's got a hot date. Yeah. But we're doing it on this February 15th. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Later. Love you.